Good morning, everyone. I, Paljinder Kaur, student manager, BIIB. It's my proud privilege to introduce Mr. Devi Prashad Das, senior vice president and head HR, India, Middle East, and Africa with Atos India, a part of Atos Global, a $8.7 billion European IT multinational company. He was earlier associated with Tech Mahindra, Infosys Technologies, Godrej, GE Appliances, Advani Orlikin Limited, Indo Afric Paper Mill, VIP Industries Limited. Sir is Masters in HR from Pune University. His scholastic achievements also encompasses advanced management from INSEED, Fountain Blue, and Leadership Certificate Program from ISB. With a total of over 23 years of rich HR experience spanned across industries such as engineering, continuous process and information technology, his experience spans in the area of employee relations, recruitment, employee engagement, organization learning and development, employee performance and reward management, leadership development and building people's strategies for organization. Good morning to one and all present here, respected dignitaries, honor of the dais, I, Ruchira Kulshresh, student manager of Balaji Institute of International Business, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce you to Mr. Ernest Lewis, who is a member of management board and vice president in charge of HR for the global company Asian Paints Limited. He is graduate in economics from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata. Sir has acquired a postgraduate diploma in personal management and industrial relations from Exilare Jamshedpur. He has 25 years of rich experience in the area of human resource management in various companies in India and abroad. Notably, he has worked with Blue Dart Express as regional human resources manager followed by a stint in corporate HR in the same company. Spent 12 years in Monsanto as a regional HR director for South Asia. Tenure in Monsanto included an assignment abroad in Singapore as director HR for Southeast Asia. Sir has developed great teams including individuals who joined as young HR professionals and who are now HR leaders in Indian and abroad of large MNCs. Sir has been working at leadership level at several companies have developed HR strategies in line with business strategies, evolved organizational structures best in class HR practices to help support exceptional business outcomes. Sir is extremely passionate about music and sports. Thank you. Hi, good morning, uh, friends. That's a very loud good morning. That's a very good. Uh, so that, that's nice. Looks like you guys have had a good breakfast out there. Uh, and we're, we're also lucky to start the session sometime in the morning, so we have your full attention, not after lunch when people generally feel drowsy. Okay, so um, I, the topic uh, for us to discuss upon is uh, industrial relations. And um, um, I thought, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what comes to your mind uh, when you hear the term industrial relations. Uh, there's a lot that is being written in the newspapers these days, uh, particularly the Maruti story. Have you heard about that story? Yeah? yeah. Right. So uh, when you think of industrial relations these days, um, uh, what comes uh, to one's mind is uh, the element of uh, conflict. Right? You think uh, that uh, there is this uh, uh, situation where uh, you have on the one hand uh, the employer and on the other hand you have uh, a set of employees and in particular you are thinking of uh, uh, operators or workers who are unionized and they seem to have a relationship going out there and this relationship is, uh, is uh, based on uh, based on conflict and uh, that's what we've been hearing for years together even when I studied many years ago um, you know but I think uh, you know I was reading up somewhere and uh, from my own experience um, I realized that uh, when you talk about industrial relations it's a much much broader term um, it means it actually must be based on 
the element of cooperation and industrial relation uh, is therefore not only a relationship between the employer and the employee but there are many many other stakeholders so you also have the government which is also very clear because when there is a conflict you know the government steps in to adjudicate conciliate to solve the matter uh, then you have other stakeholders uh, you have the shareholders of the company you have the society at large uh, you have other institutions like uh, the world labor organization uh, ILO uh, you know monetary fund etc um, uh, universities uh, and therefore you are surrounded by all kind of stakeholders so when you talk about industrial relations we are talking about a situation where there is industry okay and there is a set of uh, stakeholders including the employees who are operating uh, in that scenario and a certain relationship is um, you know established there so I, I just wanted to you know put that thought across you know to begin with you know so now I'll hand over the mic to Mr. Das good morning yeah I have been um can't believe I have, I'm actually coming out to address a uh, group of students after many years, huh? other than the campus PPT that I do in some of the top B schools. Um, and I'm really happy to be here uh, after many years. I have come to Balaji earlier, probably four years back, four or five years back. It's pretty early. And um, I, that time also I told um, one compliment saying that I see the group very extremely disciplined. Okay? And a lot of synergy in the group. Huh? All of them well dressed, properly dressed speaking at the same time <laughs> and, and, and well prepared to ask questions okay that's most important um, having said that um, I mean I, I must start with a uh, cautionary note that probably looking at my esteemed panel I'm not the right person to be on the dais at this point of time um, because on the topic I have uh, almost left the unionized workforce um, handling them for about last 13 years. The day I decided to get into Infosys and left manufacturing to get into IT and from Infosys to take Mahindra and to a toss. So um, uh, if I replace uh, industrial to human, yeah, I could speak some words or some thoughts to you. But on the hindsight, um, it's a lovely opportunity for me to also reflect the first uh, 11 years of my career I spent. And almost each of the company that I spent, I had some, some experience uh, to share. Starting from my first job uh, from the campus, I joined a company called VIP Industries. You remember the luggage? And I was posted in Jalgaon. And the day I, posted, I was posted, the strike started. And then the lockout, you know, the first induction into the you know, industry in, in, you know, in personnel department. You know, those days we never used to call human resource was this. And then, um, I continued and then uh, in Advani when I was working I had to handle a 90 day strike and followed by lockout and a lot of uh, ugly instances. I moved on to Godres and uh, we had a big uh, huge problem there uh, where you know um, the political one political outfit wanting to get into uh, unionism and wanting to take away the union's money fund that we had kept. So uh, several such incidents that I, I, I encountered. Uh, where I agree, uh, you know, the classical thought is that there is an employer and there are employees and there is a union who only has the right to protect the interests of the employees, okay, and so-called workers on one side. And ha after that, when working for 13 years in IT, when we go on pampering unlimited uh, to, the, to, the, to the employees and, you know, before even they could realize their need, we are standing up there to provide them with uh, you know facilities benefits and so on and so forth I come back to the thought that you know what is this industrial relation and what is this relationship that we are talking about why we call it industrial relation and why in IT we call it employee relation I mean what is so different in any of the organizations that operate either it's a service industry or a bank or a manufacturing what makes them so different that in one set of circumstances you call it industrial relation and the other set of circumstances you call it employee relations okay, or employee engagement as we call it. I think it's, it's a fascinating thought and when I look back on the hindsight I think the basic relationship between the management and the workforce okay you call them IT advanced engineers uh, 
uh, talented young IT guys or the uh, or the workers that you you see in um, the traditional manufacturing units. All of them. We all work for the same purpose. We all work to uh, make the industry growth, uh, grow, progress, and we all have our livelihood uh, drawn from the same industry. So I'm wondering what is so different between these two set of uh, employer and employees, and uh, really how can we uh, link or leverage between these two set of employees and to see what, what as HR professionals we should be doing going forward. Thank you both of you for the introductory comments. Uh, I'm particularly gratified to learn that you know, we are really, really talking about working together. I remember a former boss of mine, his favorite term was about collective bargaining, which is a very important terminology in industrial relations, saying that we bargain and they collect. <laughs> and then he had a further description of bargaining. He says what it really means for us is that you must bar the gain. That's what he understood by bargaining. And that is why there is, there is to be a lot of fissiparious tendencies in those days. And from there, we have moved a great deal to working together and, as he right, so rightly pointed out, taking care of the various <coughs> stakeholders from the government to the shareholders to including multilateral agencies because ultimately in the capital formation of a nation, multilateral agencies play a great role. It's not that a nation can just get together and put its money there. Everyone is not going to dig out their pot of gold and say to the government, hey, take this and use it for building roads or whatever. It doesn't happen that way. And that's a very, very important